Welcome everyone. Today we'll be looking at how to get over 200 Primal Gems by finding hidden achievements, hidden quests, and also more chests from patch 1.1. In this video, we'll go over a total of 16 different achievements, including some of the hidden ones that is not included on the achievement list, and also three new chests from patch 1.1, and one side quest that will give us 60 Primal Gems. So in total, we're looking at 200 plus Primal Gems. Now keep in mind, it is possible you might have done some of those, but use the timestamps to see the ones you haven't done and go through the guide with the replays. Coming over to the first and my favorite hidden achievement is this one. Let me have a look and let me show you guys. So firstly, you need to suicide a character. He or she has to die first, and I do recommend going for a low HP character. Then use one of your lowest revival items that give him or her the lowest HP. So this one is... Uh, badly cooked steak. We'll talk about the cooking quest as well. So here I'm going to revive Bennett with 50 HP and after I'm going to teleport to a special location over here. So we're teleporting over here on this warp point. So this is the battery plane luring. So we're teleporting on this warp point and when the teleportation complete something bizarre is going to happen. So let's have a look over here and we dies. <laughs> so make sure you have Bennett or whoever has the lowest HP with 50 HP coming to the teleportation point Every day there is a boar that is camping travelers. If you come to this teleportation point, the boar will charge at you and deal about 50 or 100 damage to you. So you need to make sure you don't have enough HP and then you get smacked by the boar. And then you die. And then you get the achievement. Now if you can't find the boar on this warp point, it's okay to find a different boar. But if you want, you can wait for the next day for the boar to come back and kill you at the warp point. <laughs> Very lovely, right? Next up, we'll be looking at two different achievements for fighting the Quail Reservine or the Quail Flower. Basically, what happens is the flower first will have a little core on the root of its flower. You can break that. After that, the text will show as the flower starts to spin. I'll show you guys the text. When the text shows, unstable energy is starting to gather or converge near its cholera. So the head of the flower now is vulnerable. If you hit the flower's head at this moment, you will stun it and you will take more damage as it goes into vulnerability. You also unlock the achievement for this. What you can do is, if you have trouble hitting the head of the flower as it spins, you can have someone lining down mines like Klee or someone doing AoE damage to hit the head of the flower. And here I'm trying to hit the head of the flower. Basically, I'm laying down a lot of mines and you can see over here, as the flower spins and hits me, it actually smacked into my mines. And this hit the head of the flower, the cholera, this you know, the special flower dragon. And by doing so, guys, you got the extreme gardening achievement, and the flower is all of a sudden vulnerable to take more damage. Our next achievement has to do with the quail flower as well. Because the new design of the map, if you can't find a way to enter the map, you can use a short character like Klee or maybe a short character like Donna to come to this point and you can get to the flower. It has to be a short character. Chi Chi, Klee, and Donna are the ones that can get in very easily otherwise you have to go from the bottom so this time with the flower what you're going to do is you're going to try to not hit the color not hit the color once and if you don't hit the color you will get another achievement so you can still hit the bottom of the flower you can still do damage what you're looking for is the beginning text when the flower is gathering energy at its color so over here you can see the flower charges up and the text reminds us the energy is gathered at the color now avoid doing AoE damage, avoid hitting the head of the flower, and take your time. What you're hoping for is you're waiting for the next text. You can just run around, wait for the flowers to do its thing. So what you're doing now is try to not hit the head of the flower, and then wait for the next text. And after waiting for about 2 minutes, the flower says the core is now reformed at its roots. Now you can break the roots and kill the flower. This way, I didn't do much of the damage to the flower's cholera. Of course, I tried to avoid it. So I waited for two minutes, not hitting its head. And this allows me to get another achievement. So it's very lovely. And I'll show you guys over here, we'll kill the flower. And over here, by killing the flower without hitting its cholera, you got another achievement. Take that, you overblown Miss Flower. So a few of the hidden achievements with the quail flower, I'm still looking for other flowers. But for now, grab those while we can. You can see the rewards for not hitting the flower's color is about 10 Primal Gems and the rewards for hitting the color achievement is 5 Primal Gems. So we're getting 15 Primal Gems for doing the Cryo Flower differently. Next up, we'll have a hidden achievement with the daily commissions with feeding the ducks with Timmy. Now the only reason I wanted to kill the ducks is because we want to unlock the achievements. Poor Timmy is waiting for his dad and never wanted to kill his ducks. But we had to do that just to show you can do the achievement. So after coming to the location where Timmy wants you to feed the ducks, make sure you shoot some ducks and make sure you kill at least one or two of them. Then begin the quest 
and after that, come back to Timmy. After speaking to Tammy, Tammy will be really angry and he says, what have you done, you monster, basically. And this will conclude the commission for today. You have to wait for the next day to continue the second part of the achievement. When the next day comes, you'll be given a guaranteed commission quest to come to Grace and apologize to Timmy. What you need to do is you need to give her three Philly mushrooms. After giving her three Philly mushrooms, she will give you a special hash brown for Timmy and this allows us to apologize to Timmy. So coming over here by giving the hash brown to Timmy, we would have apologized to Timmy and not only this finished the daily commission, it also gave us a special achievement for doing so. So over here you can see the special achievement for taking responsibility for your actions. For our next achievement, we need to be on the top of the tower in Storm Terrace layer. After traveling to Storm Terrace dungeon, what you want to do is you want to take this updrift and you want to come over here. If you don't have Venti, it is still doable. Before, I thought that you have to have Venti. So look for the post that has the broken side that's facing towards us. This one will allow you to jump forward. The other one does not allow you to jump upwards. This one can allow us to jump upwards. Notice I'm using Venti, but I'm not using the updrift. So what you want to do is you want to stand on this point. And I wasn't recording the time I got the achievement. But once you stand on this point, you'll be able to get the remainings of the Gale for five Primal Gems for getting onto the top of the tower. Next up, we'll be looking at five different achievements. Some of those are hidden ones for 50 Primal Gems for cooking different food and using different methods. To start things off, we want to fail cooking 10 times in a row. And what you want to do is you want to find a cooking dish that doesn't require you a lot of resource or if you have lots of ingredients. And make sure you fail this. The first time you fail, you'll get the first achievement. And after looting this fire primal gem achievement, come back to cooking. And after getting your primal gems, come back and fail 10 more times for another hidden achievement on top of that. So what you want to do is you want to fa fail the cooking 10 more times. And after you know several attempts of you know multiple fail, you're gonna get anyone can be a gourmet. And this is the second achievement. Now that we have cooked a bunch of the undesirable food, what you can do is switch into a party of level one characters and preferably females if you can, because we'll be feeding them food. Different characters have different satisfaction rate. We want to give them enough food so they are satisfied. And by doing so, the low level characters tend to be easily satisfied because they are you know, low level, right? And the female character seems to be easily satisfied compared to the males. Razor is more, you know, more durable with food. What you want to do is you want to get everyone to full stomach. And by doing so, you unlock the bone appetite achievement. And talking about getting everyone to a full stomach, it reminds me of the last video I posted about this little comic about before the boss battle and after the boss battle. So basically, you're getting everyone chubby for the hidden achievement. If you want more details on this particular video, I do recommend coming back to this one, which was just posted today. And we also talk about the estimate rates for the different drop rates for different dungeons. For our next cooking achievement, you want to be buying as many recipes as you can. And after learning 40 different recipes, what's going to happen is you're going to unlock the survival expert achievement. This particular achievement is one of the easiest or the difficultest because you need those dish recipes. And by achieving this, you'll be getting 20 promo gems for doing this. For our last food achievement, what you want to do is you want to maximize the proficiency of each of the food up to 10 different food. What you want to start with, you want to start with the gray ones, then go to the to the green ones because the requirement for proficiency actually increase as you go up in the grade. We can see over here the green ones requires 10 proficiency to cook 10 times perfectly. The gray ones requires only five. So make sure you perfectly cook those food items up to 10 of those. And after we have gotten 10 of the food to maximum proficiency, which allows us to auto cook, we would have achieved this achievement. So mastering 10 different recipes will give us another 5 Primal Gems for the food achievement. In total, we're looking at 50 Primal Gems for all of those 5 different food achievements. Now, if you haven't subscribed, this is a really good time to do so. Make sure you also turn the bell on for the latest news as I find more of them for us. You can see that we're really dedicated for Genshin Impact. We'll have builds, guides, tips, news and events updates for everything that's Genshin Impact related. Next up, we have an achievement, which I'm sure most of you did not know about this hidden one. So it is called not indicative of the final product. What's going to happen is you have to go to the animal boss and world boss. And after the boss has underwent four different type of elemental conversions, you kill it after. This is very difficult. So I go through you guys with this one in more details. 
So before we start the boss fight, you need four different characters with four different elements. You need Electro, you need Cryo, Hydro, and also Pyro. Notice I don't have a healer, so this is going to be a hard fight because I need to use food items. So keep in mind guys, you need four different elemental characters. Now as we fight the boss, what's going to happen is, it's going to start its tornado stage. This is when you want to use elemental attacks on each of the tornadoes to debuff the tornadoes into an elemental tornado. So with Chewing over here, I debuff the tornado into Cryo. And what I want to do is, well, Chewing also died because he was really low level. And I also tried to debuff all the tornadoes with my elemental attacks. So I got a Cryo tornado and I also got a, you know, Pyro tornado. So looking over here, now the boss have two elements to be absorbed. What you want to do is, you want to get four different elemental orbs for the boss. So each time the tornado stage comes in, you need to attack the tornado with elemental skill. And after waiting for about, you know, five minutes or four minutes, I eventually find the second tornado phase. And this time we need to attack with the other elements, which we haven't debuffed. So I got Hydro, we got Electro onto the boss. So you can see there's a bunch of orbs the boss haven't absorbed. What you can now do is, you can try to fly up and collect the other animal orbs, so guarantee the boss absorbs the correct elemental orbs. Now be extra careful as you take those orbs, because you don't want to take the elemental orbs we have created. So keep all the elemental ones, like the Hydro and the Cryo ones over here, the boss absorbs those randomly. So you can remove some of the animal ones, you guarantee the boss will absorb the ones we want the boss to absorb. And during this time, you may be taking more damage, and what you can do is, if you don't have a healer, use food items to heal yourself. And you can see I'm taking massive amount of damage as the boss absorbs those orbs. And once the boss has absorbed all four of those different elemental orbs, we kill the boss. And finally, after 10 minutes of testing and running around, we finally kill the boss. We got the hidden achievement, not indicative of the final product for 10 Primal Gems. It's hard work, but it was very entertaining because I felt it was like a special challenge. For our next achievement, we need to hit enemy with a plunging attack after plunging for more than 5 seconds. This sounds a little difficult at the start, but after looking around, eventually I was able to find this particular location over here. So this is where the star is, and we teleport into this particular teleportation point. I will show you guys the particular replay for this as well. So after coming to the teleportation point, fly towards the star location. And once you fly towards the star location, you might be sometimes getting an updrift as well to guarantee that you get the 5 seconds. Don't worry if you don't hit the monster the first time. So once you kind of above the star location, you now take a leap of faith and smack down. What you're looking forward to is you're looking forward to smack into a cryo flower. And you can see the flower just standing innocently over there. I just landed on the flower and notice I also took some damage as I fell. So that's a little interesting, but we got the achievement. So that's the most important part. So if you look at my HP, I had decent HP. I had 8,000 HP when I landed, and I lost 7,000 HP because the fall damage was calculated for some reason. Interesting, right? So small hidden part is if you fall from height, you also take more damage. Previously, I think we don't take any damage at all. Maybe a hidden nerf. But the biggest point is you smack this little flower and you get the achievement. And just to show you guys where the star is, it's pretty much on this point. It's a little to the left, a little to the right. Give it a try if you don't hit it the first time, but you teleport from this point to this point and smack down. Next up, we have another hidden achievement for casting five different elemental burst spells within 15 seconds. Now you might think this is quite difficult because how do you get five characters you know, without abusing the game? So what you can do is, if you're doing like me, go to one of the story side dungeons and when you have a special character added to the team, have everyone with full energy and then cast everything together within 15 seconds. This is by far the easiest way. What you can also do is, you can just recharge five different characters with energy, have them on different parties. And if you're quick enough to swap your parties and you know cast four elemental spells, then swap onto the next party, then cast one more spell, it can also work. But the easiest way guys is of course, when you're doing story dungeons, you make sure you cast all the spells together with the five characters. And you know, it's easy achievement. So I'll show you guys over here. I finally was able to do it with Child because this was his side story. So here we go, we got the Vicious Psycho achievement for doing all 5 of the best spells within 15 seconds. Now again guys, remember that you do not need to go to a side story to do this. This is just easier because I don't need to switch parties. If I want to, I can save enough burst energy for 5 different characters and we swap quickly for the 5 different casting for different characters. Just swap from party 1 to party 2. Next up, there is an achievement for doing over 20,000 critical damage. 
I do believe this one for 10,000 10, critical damage as well, because you can notice this three stars there. So that means this, this achievement can be done three times. So there's probably one after this as well. What you want to do, guys, is if you find yourself a little short on damage, come over here to the Spiral Abuse and go to floor level 7. Why I'm saying this is because floor level 7 actually gives us a special critical buff. And you can see that we're getting another 120% more critical damage. By doing so, we can actually achieve higher critical damage and uh, complete this achievement. I was able to get 20,000 critical damage because of this particular buff. So this is pretty massive. Usually artifact, like one piece of level 20 artifact only gives 60%. This alone give 120%. So no food items give this much critical damage. And if you want to achieve higher critical damage for the achievement, come back to flower 7. You can repeat those and we're not here to do much. We're just here to debuff enemies and critical hit really hard. Next up, we have a small combo of the double gliding achievement and also the 60 primal gems from the hidden island quest. So what you want to do is you want to glide for a long distance and glide for over 80 seconds. To do so, the best location in the game will be over here. I'll show you guys the location. So we want to come over here to start Wretch Cliff on the top of the cliff. After coming to this cliff, we want to glide to this particular island. So we can do two of the gliding and also the hidden island quest at the same time. Now, before we start to glide, I recommend us to have two animal characters on the team to have reduced stamina consumption. I also consider having Amber on the team if you don't have Venti for the 20% reduction to stamina when gliding. And finally, also consider having the Barbatos Retali for having another 20% reduction to stamina. If you're not sure where to find the recipe for this one, also for the cooking quest, what you want to do is you want to come to the Stone Bear's point over here for the particular NPC called Vind over here, once you speak to her, she will give you the recipe for the gliding reduction stamina food. This also helps contributing towards the, you know, the 40 food recipes because we get this one for free. And also here I shout, if you don't have Venti guys, go with Ember because she will reduce stamina consumption by 20%. And as we glide towards this hidden island, I want to show you guys my reduction to stamina. I have three multiplications to reduction. I'm not even missing much of the stamina. You can see how slow my stamina depletes because three, the, the two Animo, because having the passive talent with Venti or Ember, and lastly, we'll have the food. So I can glide, glide for over 100 seconds, and this is really good. You might not have to have everything, but it's nicer you don't waste the time, just eat the food and get everything ready for a guaranteed double achievement. Now, as we fly to the island, as you can see, two of the achievements will pop up, and this is before I landed on the island. So this distance between the island and also the cliff is perfect for us to get both of the achievements. And this in return will give us 20 primal gems. After that, the island itself has a hidden quest. I'll briefly go through the hidden quest because I think some of you might have known about the hidden quest. So I'll just go through some of the clues and leave some for you guys to solve as well. To start the hidden quest on this island, come to this point over here where you can actually break some of the, the fake rocks and start with a ragged book. And this will start the time and wind hidden quest first. In order to not spoil anything for you guys for the hidden quest, I just want to give you a small tip. Make sure you guys are between the time zone from the early evening before the sun rises. This is the time you can actually look for the special quest objectives and blow them away with an emo. If you go away from this time interval, you have to come back and change your time again. This way you can see the special quest items. And after speaking to the NPC, completing this whole chain of the hidden quest, what we'll be getting is, we'll be getting 60 primal gems and a special achievement. This achievement will also give us five more primal gems, but for the sake that most of us might have done this, so I didn't include in the achievement category for us. Now, since we're looking at hidden achievements, hidden quests, I'll also show you guys three of the patch 1.1 chests that I looted during my gameplay. And I'll show you guys where I found those, where the locations for those three little chests. I have also come across three additional exclusive chests for us with patch 1.1. I believe those not, were not available before the patch because I have not leveled up from adventure level 44 for many, many days. So those just spawned on the map after the patch for me. So over here you can see I was flying towards this star location with a high point and right away after that I noticed something as I was flying. I noticed there are three new geo statues and those geo statues are the new puzzles that was updated likely from patch 1.1. 
after using a Geo character and the Gong over here, I was able to get the first exclusive chest and look at that, we even got a 3 star weapon with White Tassel and also 4 Geo Sigils, 2 Primal Gems and 20 Adventure Experience. After that, you can see this NPC over here picking up Lirin Jelly, uh, Lirin Chili. If you speak to her and if it's the first time you speak to her correctly, she'll give you three Lirin Chilies, I believe, and if the second time, she wouldn't give you anything. Using her as the reference over here, what you're looking for is you're looking for a little balloon thing. Notice I was, I was running over here, I was looking around, and I saw this blue thing, and I do believe I have picked all of them before the patch 1.1 came live. And this more that came up, I was like, okay, so second chest and this is why i start to be more actively aware that this can be because of the new patch instead of just things that spawning out of right because i have not seen those things spawn at all you know because i'm on level 44 for the past week now there are also a few of the core flies over here if you're looking for those you have to jump high enough for those there's about four or five over here this isn't really a big deal because there's a lot of other locations for them as well Finally, there is another location over here with the star sign I have pinpointed for you guys. So I went to this particular traveling point and I'm running over here now. As we make our way to the star sign, what you're looking for is you're looking for a chest that is behind the rocks over here. And basically you're looking for a structure like this and you're looking for one more exclusive chest. And this way, we're effectively getting three exclusive chests all of a sudden with a new patch 1.1 which is lovely. Combined with the three from child side, we're getting six chests. And the best thing is, those chests all give two primal gems, a lot of sigils, and quite a decent reward for the level two chest. To summarize this primal gem finding video, we had about over 15 or 16 different achievements with the hidden ones, with the miscellaneous ones, and with some special ones, which I'm sure most of us did not know about it, as we go to get the not indicative of the final product. That one was the most challenging, and also we had a look at the hidden quests on the island, and also different chests in different locations. So what I'll do guys is, in the future, I'll always be looking for different ways to get Primal Gems. It is likely you might have gotten some of those, but if I get that enough of them, eventually I'll find one or two of those which you haven't found before. So this way, when we have the video out, at least you'll be getting some benefits. For those that didn't have the time to find all of those, you'll be hitting a jackpot with a lot of guides and tips with more Primal Gems as I find more of those for us. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe and also turn the little bell on for the latest news. I'll be looking towards to make more builds, guides, tips, and news, and even updates for us as we come further into the game. And as always, I wish you guys the best of luck with sketching and have the most fun in exploring this wonderful world.